So yesterday was the Lakers media day and Max Christie really shined in my opinion. I really love the way that he carried himself, the confidence he just exuded. Um, he just, he seemed like a guy that knows, like, I'm about to bust everyone up. Also, looks like he changed his jersey number, right? Because isn't he number 10? And he was wearing number 12, which was Tori and Prince's number last season. I think that that's a little odd. Um, you know, maybe new contract, new you type thing. Maybe that's something. Maybe Max Christie was just like, hey, I'm ready to take a step. I'm ready to kind of turn over a new leaf. I'm right? coming in the league my third year playing under a new head coach. My first two, I was playing under, you know, Darvin Ham. He's gone, right? Like maybe, you know, some guys get a new haircut. Maybe Max Christie got a new uh, jersey number. But nonetheless, I'm really excited for Max Christie this year. And I just, I had to talk about him and just the way he really carried himself in those interviews, the way he answered the questions, um, you know, how he talked about, you know, his type of role and what is provided from him, particularly on the defensive side and how, you know, he wants to really hang his hat on the defensive end, show what he can do on the offensive side of things. Um, but really kind of be a piece this year. Uh, he looks like, you know, he's bulked up, added a little muscle. Um, you know, he's always, you know, had, had some muscle, but he just, he looked a little more cut little, like he's put on and he's been in the gym, uh, you know, it, hitting up them racks, which is good. Cause we need that need the defensive end from him in particular. Obviously, the offense would be great. But, you know, in a lot of ways, Max Christie is a anomaly. Right? Like, he is a guy that I am incredibly high on. I think he is going to have a very good year for the Lakers. When I say very good, I don't mean that he's going to be this, like, 30, you know, 5-5 five and five guy or anything like that. But I do think he's a guy that can play a real role. I think he's a guy that can be uh, just clamps on the defensive side, make the occasional play for others, make the play for himself, uh, and, you know, maybe be a 10 to 15 point a game guy, right? Somewhere in that range. He's a guy that I really want to kind of keep an eye on as a, as a potential kind of sixth man for the Lakers. I'm not saying he's going to win sixth man of the year or anything like that, but just kind of being that guy off the bench that kind of comes in and gets some buckets. But we don't really know much, right? His rookie season, he played in 41 games. He averaged 12 and a half minutes. He took six or 2.6 attempts per game. I don't really get much. He shot 42% from three that year, but on 1.5 attempts. So, again, really hard sample size to know what is he capable of doing. Then you watch uh, last year, played in 67 games. Still played 14 minutes, only got 3.6 field goal attempts, and he shot 36% on 1.8 attempts. Now, he was 40% on catch-and-shoot threes as a whole. That's good. That's a really good sign, especially because most of his threes are probably coming from catch-and-shoot, especially if he plays some significant minutes. But again, I mean, he was he had no consistent role. He was all over the place. I, one game he's playing 20 minutes because we need the body. Next game, you know, next five games he's not playing at all. Then he gets like three minutes. It's just, you got to remember, him playing 14.1 minutes per game is the average. That doesn't mean he played 14.1 in all 67 games he played, right? So, you know, he's a guy that is looked at as uh, that prototypical 3 and D two guard. Right? A guy that can play the two, he can play the three on occasion. It's not something that I'd want him doing night in and night out, but certain matchups, especially off the bench, a lot of bench matchups, I think he, he would be fine in, um, slotted at the three on occasion, but I just think... You know, you, you have Rui, Dalton Connect, I'd like to see get some run. Jared Vanderbilt hopefully comes back sooner rather than later. Anthony Davis is expected to play more four, which means LeBron's going to play more three. If Max Christie's really going to play, it's probably more times than not going to be at the two guard, which is fine. I mean, he's got great size for a two guard, good length, good physicality. Um, and he's arguably our second best on-ball defender, not named Jared Vanderbilt, right? Behind Jared Vanderbilt, Max Christie, I think that there's a genuine argument for. Now, I think you can make an argument for Gabe Vincent, um, especially with his experience and him just kind of being a vet. Uh, you know, Cam Reddish, because of his size and his length, you can, I think you can make an argument for. But just like pound for pound, 
I do think Max Christie really does have an argument in that regard uh, as far as defense goes. I mean, he did some numbers on guys like Damian Lillard and Devin Booker and really kind of just held his own. And if he can continue to grow, continue to get better discipline-wise on the defensive side, go a long way, right? Like, he's shown the ability to be a three-level scorer. I don't believe that the Lakers are going to really ask him for that this year. Never know, right? If he's cooking, let him cook. But I think more likely than not, he's going to be looked at as like, uh, hey, we need you to play that Danny Green, KCP type role where you're just, you're, you're defending the best guard on the other team. You're doing it at a high level and you're, you're knocking down the open three ball. I'm not saying he's going to be KCP. I'm not saying he's going to be Danny Green. I mean, you're talking about two of like the staple three and D two guards in the league, right? Like, and, but he doesn't necessarily have to be. Right, because KCP, Danny Green, at their peaks, they're your starting two guard. They're the guys you're looking to, you know, really, you know play 30, 35 minutes a game, night in and night out. Guard, not just the the best guard when they're in, but get best player. Period. Right, like they're they're asked to do so much more. Right, where Max Christie, he's looked at, he's sixth, seventh, eighth guy for the Lakers. Right, so he's just not going to have. But if he can be half of what, or even a quarter off the bench of what, you know, Pete KCP or Danny Green could provide you. That's huge, right? If, again, if he can knock down 40% plus on catch and shoot threes, if he can get his overall three point percentage up from 36% to, you know, 38%, right? I'm not saying he has to be super elite, but if he can be 38% from three, defend at a high level, um, give you, like I said, 10 points, eight, let's call it 8 to 12 range, that'd be great. That would genuinely be great. Not everyone has to be a superstar. Not everyone has to be this this world beater or anything like that. Like, you just need him to come in, play the role that is asked of him. right? Come in, play the part that is needed for him to just be that guy that you can trust out there to defend opposing guards, defend the occasional small forward, but be comfortable in hitting the shots. Still very young. He's 21 years old. He's still several years younger than the guy we just drafted this year that's looked to have an immediate impact. You know, if Max Christie was in this year's draft, he probably would have went, you know, in the, he probably maybe even been a lottery pick, right? Like, he is and has the talent. I really like Max Christie. I am incredibly high on Max Christie. But he does still have a lot of, a lot to prove and a lot of work to do, right? Like, he, he, but we don't really know either way. And I know some people aren't happy with the $8 million contract, but you got him locked up long-term. You don't have to worry about it. If he turns out to be the guy that you think he's going to be, then he's going to outperform that contract before it's up. right? So you got him in on value. Now, if he basically isn't worthy enough for a rotation spot and all that, like, you know, he's just disappointing, then, yeah, then you have that. So it is a bit of a risk, but I think it's a risk worth taking. And because of his age, because of his youth, somebody would have thrown $8 million, $10 million at him, right, just to take a flyer on him and to just get him away from the Lakers. So if you're the Lakers, you don't want to play around. You don't want to mess around. You got him for $8 million. The new CBA kicks in next year, or uh, not CBA, new TV deal kicks in next year. You're fine. Right, like, don't take the risk. Don't gamble with a, a, a promising young player that can really have an impact on this team this season. Right, like a lot of people talk about Dalton Connect kind of playing the Torian Prince role, and I do think that's fair. I do think he's kind of stepping in, playing the three, similar size, all that stuff. But Max Christie is likely going to be asked to be the the Torian Prince guy, and not in the sense of like the three-point shooting stuff, but more so of just, like, that sixth, seventh guy off the bench that can come in and have a real impact. That on, on the occasional night, go get you, you know, 20-plus. But most nights, he's giving you 8 to 10, right? Like, that is what I think Max Christie is going to be looked to do. He's going to be looked to come in, play a big role, play a big part, have an impact on both sides of the basketball, stay within your frame, Stay within your role. We don't need you 
out here thinking, I know you look like Kobe, but we don't need you out here playing like him, right? Like, model your game after after a KCP. Model your game after, uh, you know, a Danny Green or an Alex Caruso or these just 3 and D guys that know their role, play in, do the dirty work, hustle, die for loose balls, you know, defend at a high level, can knock down the open shot. That's what you need. If he can provide that, he's going to be He's going to be a big, impactful player this year for the Lakers. But anyway, as always, it's is a discussion. Pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? You excited for Max Christie? Um, do you think like, ah, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me not. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. And that subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next